Again, welcome to operating system. This is CS332 class. Uh, this lecture is the continuation of the previous lectures, which is computer system overview. Here we're going to focus on interrupts. So mechanism by which other modules may interrupt the normal sequence of the processor is known as again interrupt, interrupts. So eventually all computers provide a mechanism by which other modules such as input and output or memory may interrupt the normal sequence of the processor. So again, interrupts are provided primarily as a way to improve processor utilization. So for example, we know mostly IO devices are much slower than the processor. So suppose a processor is transferring data to a printer using the instruction cycle. After each write operation, the processor must pause and remain idle until the printer catches up since the printer is slower than the processor. Now the length of this pause may be on the order of many thousands or even millions of instruction cycles. Clearly, this is a very wasteful use of the processor. So again, the whole concept of interrupts is to improve the utilization of the processor. So provided to improve its processor ut utilization. Since we know again, most IO devices are slower than the processor, processor must pause to wait for the IO devices to catch up. And the time it waits or the processor become idle, that's what will bring the concept of wasteful use of the processor. So these are different types of uh, classes of interrupts. For example, a program interrupt normally we generated by some condition that occurs as a result of an instruction execution. Example can be arithmetic overflow or division by zero or an attempt to execute an illegal machine instructions. A timer normally would, would be generated by the timer, the timer within the processor. Again, this will allow the operating system to perform certain function on a game regular basis or regular time basis. Then we have the IO. This normally generated by the IO controller to signal the normal compression of, a, of an operation or to a signal a variety of error condition. And then the hardware failure normally generated by the failure such as power failure or memory parity error. So we have an example here. Again, the, the flow of control here is without, again, interrupt. So for example, we start from number one, we are executing some tasks. Then when we reach where the arrow is, we may need another execution. So again, to give a very specific example here, let's say we consider a program counter that operates at one giga S or a processor, sorry, that operates at one giga S, which also will allow roughly 1 billion instructions per second. So a typical hard disk has a rotational speed somewhere around 7,000, 7,500 revolutions per minute for again, half track rotation time of four milliseconds, which is four milli, mil, million times slower than the processor. So this figure again, show the state of affairs. Uh, this state of affairs, how again processor more faster than again IO device. So the user program will perform a series of write calls, as we can see, write calls, and to interleave with processing. Now the solid vertical line we have represent the segment of the code in the program. 
with a solid line. Then the code section, we have one, two, three, refers to the sequence of instruction that do not involve IO. So we can see the IO on the right side. So the program one, two, three is not involved with IO. Then the right calls are to an IO. So when there's a right call here, it goes to the IO. Another right call, come back. That is a system utility and it will perform actual input output operations. So the IO program consists of three sections. We can see three sections, a sequence of instructions, a sequence of instructions, which is labeled for, to prepare for the actual IO operation. Now this may include copying the data to the, to be output, into a special buffer and preparing the parameters for the device command. Then secondly, the actual IO command without the, again, this is without the use of interrupt. Once this command is issued, the program must wait for the IO device to perform the requested function or periodically check the status or the PO or the IO device. So this program might wait by simp simply repeating, perform a test operation to determine if the I operation is done. And that's what we can see here. So the program must wait before continue. I is done, program is waiting before continue. So the right call is called the right comma call for I O program to execute. So after finishing, then we come back and continue. So the time the processor for one will be waiting, Hido, to move to the second stage. This is where if we have interrupt, again, it can do some work. So a sequence of instruction level five, which is here to complete the operation. This may include again setting a flag indicating the success or the failure of the operation. Now the dashed line represents the path of execution followed by the processor. That's again, this line shows the sequence in which instructions are executed. So after the first write instruction is encountered, the user program is interrupted and execution continue with the IO program. So when the right is encountered, we go to the IO program, then we execute number four. Now, the second option is with interrupt. This is a short IO wait. So with interrupt, the processor can engage in executing other instructions while an IO operation is in progress. So we should consider the following. Uh, as before, the user again program reaches a point at which it makes system call in the form of write call, which is right here. Now the IO program that is invoked in this case consists only of a preparation code and the actual IO command. And after these few instructions have been executed, Again, the control returns to the user program. Meanwhile, the, the external device is busy accepting data from computer memory and printing it. So this IO operation is conducted concurrently with the execution of instruction in the user program also. The user. So this is again with interrupt. We have the interrupt handler also. So when the standard device becomes ready to be serviced, that is when it is ready to accept more data from the processor, again, the IO module for that standard device sends an interrupt request signal to the processor. Then the processor will respond by again, suspending the operations of the current program, then branching off to a routine to service that particular IO device known as interrupt handler 
and also resuming the original execution after the device's service finish. So again, this is a long IO wait. And uh, here we see again, the same concept here. We have a user program, there's a write call to the IO program execute finish, then it comes back to continue and then it's going. So for a user program, an interrupt normally will suspend the normal sequence of execution. An example can show in the next diagram. So we can see a user program executing one, two, then when you reach I, there's interrupt. So the processor take 10 and do some work, interrupt handler. After finishing the task, it will come back and continue where it's left in the user program. So again, for the user program, interrupt is suspend the normal sequence of execution. Again, when the interrupt process is completed, execution resumes. So the user program does not have to contain any special code to accommodate interrupts. The processor and the OS are responsible for suspending the user program and then resuming it at the same point. Yeah, so we saw this program, this diagram in our previous lectures. Uh, this is again, instruction cycle with this time with interrupts. Previous one, there's no interrupt. So our instruction cycle is two cycles. Fetch the next instruction executed. If it's not finished yet, we're going to test our condition, start all over. So to accommodate interrupts, an interrupt stage is added to the instruction cycle. As we can see in this diagram, the interrupt state. So in the interrupt stage, the processor checks to see if any interrupts have occurred, then indicated by the presence of an interrupt signal. So again, if no interrupts are pending, then the processor proceeds to the fetch stage. The stages, the fetches, the next instruction of the current program. So if an interrupt is pending, the processor will suspend execution of the current program and also execute an interrupt and land routine. So this is again our example of hardware and the software. So here we can see, again, we have the device controller or other system handling issue and interrupt. So here an interrupt will trigger a number of events both it can be the processor hardware and also in the software. So this shows a typical sequence. When IO device completes an IO operation, the following sequence of hardware events occur. So first will be the device issues and interrupt signal. So that's the first step device controller or the other system hardware issue and interrupt con controller. Then the processor finishes execution of the current instruction before responding to the interrupt. So processor finish execution of current instruction. The next stage processor will signal acknowledgement of interrupt. So the, again, the process test for a pending interrupt request determines that there is one and send an acknowledgement signal to the device that is issued the interrupt. So the acknowledgement allows the device to remove its interrupt signal. Then we move to again, processor pushes PSW and PC onto control stack. So also in the software session, we have save remainder of the process state information. Then we have a process interrupt, then restore process state information. And also 
restore the old PSW and PC. So we have the concept of what we call the multiple interrupts. So multiple interrupts, normally an interrupt occurs while another interrupt is being again processed. So example is receiving data from communications line and printing result at the same time. So an example of this approach is we should consider a system with three IO devices, a printer, a disk, and communication line with increasing priority of two, three, two, sorry, two, four, and five. And that's the concept here, two, four, and five. Now, figure one point one three here is based on example in a textbook, our textbook, which illustrates a possible sequence. So first, a user begins at t equal to zero, and at t equal to one, the printer interrupt occurs. So user information is placed on the control stack and execution continues at the printer interrupt service routine. Now, while this routine is still executing at t equal to 15, executing at t equal to 15, a communication interrupt will occur. Communication interrupt occurs. Now, because communication line has higher priority than the printer, in this case, the interrupt request is honored. So the printer ISR is interrupted and the state is pushed onto the stack. So that would be the conclusion uh, for this lectures. Again, our this lecture focus on what is interrupt. Again, the goal of using interrupt is to maximize uh, the utilization of the CPU. Now, a very good example, as we saw in the, in the slides, we know processor runs faster than IO modules. Now, if you are getting your input or data from IO or processor do the work finish, is send it to the Apple device. As we all know, Apple device, let's say a printer need to print. Printer is slower than a CPU or a processor. So it will reach some stage that Printer have a lot of work to do and is doing it very slow. So processor have to wait. So we can bring the concept of Intel to fulfill these tasks for us. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.